Today on Tech Talk, we address an issue that's relevant, if not outright concerning, to anybody that has one of these, which is, can your mobile phone be hacked? And if so, how could that happen? Today, we're joined by Nick Dawson. He is responsible for Samsung's mobile security platform worldwide. Thank you so much for being with us. No, oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I'm always worried that somebody's just going to lift this out of my bag and take my stuff. But in fact, yeah. it's much less uh, direct than that. I mean, you could do that from without even taking my phone. Oh, you could. You could do it remotely. I could do it from here. Well, maybe not me, but smart people could absolutely <laughs> do that. The bad guys, as I call them, they know what they're doing. Uh, you Who know. are these people? Well, you know, it can be anybody. Uh, it depends what you do. I mean, if it could just be, we call them bad actors. Uh, it could just be some hacker, you know, in the train station, on the train, whatever. Uh, in a corporate sense, corporate espionage is a very real thing for okay. government customers. Other governments are trying to hack into their systems. It just goes on and on and on. And I mean, there's the you know, threats are around us every so it's yeah. obviously a massive problem. Oh, it is. It is. And it will always be a problem because, you know, whenever on the good guy side of the equation we solve a problem, uh, the bad guys will find, you know, another attack vector. And so we're always playing this game of cat and mouse with each other. And what are the threats that we should be concerned with? You know, there's a ton of threats out there, and it's probably, you know, too, too, uh, too lengthy to go into the, 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 the insanely long list. But one of the ones that I think most people don't think about, particularly in a corporate sense, in an enterprise sense, which is where I work, I don't really work on the consumer side of the company, is actually employees of the company. And not out of any malicious intent whatsoever, but they are the biggest security threat employees to an organization. Employees of the company. Employees of the company. But what it is, like I said, not with malicious intent, but they'll, they'll click on, on a, a random link that they got, or they'll download an application to their phone or their computer that hasn't been vetted by their IT department. They make silly, you know, uninformed decisions sometimes, which can lead to threats, you know, getting through the firewalls of an organization and penetrating the organization. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. You say that they're, they're not malicious and unintentional, yeah. but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. there are those out there that are absolutely intentional absolutely. and malicious. Absolutely. I mean, you, you hear about, you know, on these app stores, for example, you know, malicious applications being developed that have viruses or, you know, Trojan horses. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, is the easiest way to propagate those is to trick people into downloading them. When you click a link on a text message, you're giving your phone an instruction. Do this. Do whatever is behind that link. And that's how a lot of these malicious applications get on the phone. Is this the yeah. most common way? It's probably the the uh, probably the biggest threat that is out there. In all honesty, it's hard to put a number on it, but just you know, employees who are perhaps you know ill-informed, haven't been educated about the risks, and they don't know they're doing anything wrong. They just make a mistake. Yeah. But for for example, for me, yeah. for my own phone, would yeah. that also be? Absolutely. The, the most common way to hack my phone is it if I probably is. It most likely click is. Click a link that's not you right. You click a link that's not right. You download an application. You're not too sure where it came from. You know, if you download an application, when was the last time that you looked at all of the permissions that application is asking for on your phone, for example? When was the last time you read a license agreement on something, right? Well, none of us do, mm -hmm. um, you know, because they're far too long. But, you know, this is where some of the risks are. There are yeah. other attack vectors. I mean, people can try to brute force into your device remotely or if they gain access to it okay. to take all the data. But yeah. yeah. And what about your thumbprint? Yeah, yeah. Can you well, steal your thumbprint or your yeah. face? Yeah, so people need to think about this, right? So there's various ways to protect a mobile device, right? I mean, passwords is, is the most obvious. Uh, nowadays, we're using biometrics. Thumbprints were the first ones. Uh, can be more secure than a password, depending on you know what rules are in place to enforce it. We're using iris scans and facial recognition now as well, which are even more secure than thumbprints. But they can still be hacked? But you, Well, it's, it's hard to hack them, but here's one of the concerns is where am I storing that biometric data? You know, where am I storing yeah. that biometric well, data? Well, on Samsung devices, we actually store the biometric data in a special area within the chipset and the hardware itself. And we actually hide it from everything else on the device. We have a, a layer, if you will, to obfuscate that data from the mm -hmm. things that need to access it. So we never expose your biometric data to anything or anyone. So, I mean, users need to go out there and be informed as to what they're investing in, you know, in terms of their products. So it feels yeah. like more, every time you invent a new layer of technology, you have to bring the cybersecurity with it. You do. And we think about that a lot. So, you know, Samsung, we have a program, it's called Knox, and that's that's where I work. And it's, it's sort of the umbrella name for our security platform on the one hand. And on the other, 
a modular suite of services primarily for enterprise customers. But we're constantly you know, scanning the world and taking a look at what are the next threats that are out there. When we're building products, we know what features are going to be in them. I mean, if we invent you know, a hologram you know, for next year, we're not, by the way, just so that you know. <laughs> but if we did, that would bring with it a whole bunch of new security concerns that we would need to think about. And so we make sure that we architect the security into the core platform on the devices out of the gate, not as an afterthought for people. Yeah. Now, you are here uh, for the Swiss Digital Day that happens in Bern. That's right. Um, to address uh, the Swiss. Now, Switzerland, according to even some of our guests that have been on the program, fares quite well in terms of cybersecurity. Absolutely. What's your. Okay, yeah, you're no, great. I would say absolutely. And I mean, this is a country that, if you look at the major industries in this country, you know, outside of government, you know, when we're talking about financial services, uh, a lot of ph ph pharmacological work and things like this with intellectual property. Security has always been paramount here, um, you know, and, and uh, very robust and mature security framework. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, our team at Samsung does is we work with governments worldwide to ensure that we're meeting their very, very strict and well-defined security requirements within our devices uh, themselves so that it's baked in at the factory so that they can trust the actual phones themselves out of the box, that they meet their cryptography requirements, that we have all of the appropriate layers of protections in place. It's very important to the yeah. Swiss, as you Absolutely. know. We have a culture yeah. of security yeah. and privacy that goes yeah. back yeah. many generations. Yes, yes, well known, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And so we work very closely, and so one of the things that I'm here for is, you know, to talk to certain members within the Swiss government and the broader community to ensure that we are, in fact, doing the things that are expected of us to ensure that our devices meet local requirements, such as we have done in the past in the US and the UK for governments around the world. In fact, our devices at Samsung are security accredited and approved by more governments worldwide than any mobile device in the history of the industry because of this type of work that we do to guarantee this core security platform is baked into the device. It's part of its DNA, if you will, out of the gate. Well, you call it a defense-like. Yeah, yeah, defense-grade. We or refer defense to grade. it. Defense-grade. Defense-grade security. Yeah. So our security platform is Used really. Used by military. Yeah. Or? Well, it is actually, and I can't talk too much about that, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Mm -hmm. But we do have militaries around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, that use uh, our devices uh, out there in tactical situations in the field, you know, in combat zones. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we actually provide as part of our tool set is the ability for our customers to configure and tailor and customize the devices to meet very, very specific requirements. A soldier out in a combat zone mm -hmm. has very different requirements for a mobile handheld device than I do working in an office or sitting on an airplane, for example. So, you know, the ability to tailor that, to lock it down, but to ensure that it's secure, impenetrable, uh, hack-proof, if you will, uh, is really what we're doing. And how can, if we think about uh, the business community, I mean, how yeah. can companies, how can they secure this inevitable digital transformation? Right. So, I mean, one of the things there is uh, companies need to, they need to think about devices a little bit differently than they thought about, um, you know, traditional computing devices, such as a laptop or a desktop computer in the old days. It was fairly easy to secure one of those things. I mean, fairly, well, relatively Well, it didn't go speaking. anywhere, first of all. Yeah, see, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> and that's the whole point. It yeah. sort of stayed in a place. You put up what's called a firewall, which mm -hmm. is a barrier between you and the rest of the world. And if you do that correctly, you're generally okay. Mm -hmm. Mobile devices are a different beast. They're sitting out there wandering around beyond the four walls of the enterprise on unknown, untrusted networks. You are allowing people to mix work applications and data with personal applications and data on the phone. And you know, how do I ensure that if you do something silly on the personal side of your phone, it can't impact the work side of my phone? So Absolutely. what we do is we actually create with our Knox platform the ability to completely isolate these two environments so they are effectively, they can't talk to one another. So even if I do something remarkably silly, on the personal side of my phone, mm -hmm. it can never talk to or impact anything on the work side, which is all my company cares about. They don't care what I do on the personal side of the phone. So that's really what people need to think about. They just need to think about that extra step of, you're working in untrusted domains. Mm -hmm. uh, what more do I need to do to guarantee the integrity of these things? And it starts with the device itself. Mm -hmm. Security cannot be an afterthought. It's not something that you can go out and buy afterwards. It has to be fundamentally part of the device. And there are a couple of companies out there in the mobile world 
who have invested heavily in this space to make sure that their phones, their tablets, their wearables mm -hmm. are secure out of the box. I'm glad to say we're one of them. There's yeah. another one that I'm not allowed to mention. Yeah. But yeah, they, they, they're very well known as well. We'll take a wild guess. Yeah, yeah, you take a wild guess. Very yeah, big yeah. in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's fine, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it, it's, it's always an interesting debate, right? Because the more security you have, it's, it's, it almost feels like you have less freedom. It does. And you know what? One of the things is security implemented properly should not feel that way. It is very, very easy for it to be overbearing. But is it really yeah. a lack, uh, less freedom? It can. Not only the way it feels. No, yeah, no, it did. It's, it's not less freedom. In fact, security done properly in today's world should give you all of the freedom to enjoy open systems and platforms and do whatever you want. It's, uh, it would be very easy just to turn off your camera, turn off Wi-Fi networks, not allow you to do anything, and now I've got a secure device but it's completely useless to me. Mm -hmm. We need to give people the freedom to do what they want, and absolutely, and we're, we're all about that at Samsung, but you can do it in a way that makes sure that we protect them. So what we try to do is we abstract a lot of the complexity from IT security away from the user, and we just make it part of the device. It's just embedded, it's there. You just, you know, you don't have to download it, install it, pay for it, it's just on the phone, out of the gate, and that's the way it should be, right? That's the way it should be these days. I just have this feeling of, you know, no matter what you do, if you have a smart device, Big Brother is watching somewhere. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't sort of sit there and dictate what governments are actually going to do uh, in their in their local jurisdictions. There is no doubt that people need to be aware, not just governments, but the service providers they use. You know, social media. I won't name any names, but they're all gathering some information and some data. People need to be aware of that, absolutely. And that's where um, you know, personal data protection regulations like GDPR in Europe, and, and you have very similar regulations. I've forgotten the acronym here in Switzerland. Um, are designed, GDPR. yeah, designed to you know address that issue, the sovereignty of personal data and information, mm -hmm. to protect users so that they don't have to worry about it as much. Because let's face it, you know, people don't want to read through a 20-page license agreement to figure out what they're doing. And so, they don't. You know, and they don't. Yeah. So you know, we we need to we need to protect people. But people should be aware that yeah, you know, data is the new oil. A lot of people say that, I, right? I mean, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and if you look at these numbers, the mobile security market that's expected to reach, according to Market to Markets Research, 5.75 billion yeah. by 2019. I would say probably that's a very, very conservative estimate. Okay. I would say that's a what very, say? very low number. I I'd actually don't even really want to hazard a guess, to, to okay. be honest with you, okay. but I think you can slice and dice but it different ways. But 6 billion ways. is conservative. It's, that's, and that's still a lot of money, but yeah. I think you're actually talking in the tens of billions. It depends how far you're, you're, you're addressing the envelope uh, on, on security with those numbers. Right. But it is a massive industry, without a doubt. Um, and there's different ways to secure products and devices. Mm -hmm. We have a fundamental belief at Samsung that it starts in the actual device itself, you know, and that's mm -hmm. what our NOC security platform does. Like I was saying, it's just mm -hmm. embedded, it's there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. It protects my mother in Vancouver just as much as it protects me in Seoul, South Korea. But, um, you know, you can't add these things as an afterthought. They don't work as well. You know, mm. So if it's just part of the actual framework of the device, you're probably in a, at a better starting point, at least. You still have to be aware where you're going, what you're doing, who you're talking yeah, to. Yeah, you're still responsible. You, you're, still you're still responsible for your behavior, Absolutely. but we do everything we can to protect you from mm. unintentional you know, threats mm -hmm. or exposure. Yeah. As we look at the future of mobile technology, we've yeah. got 5G yeah. coming up. The implications now in Switzerland is already in the yeah. process of upgrading to yeah. 5G, how will this impact mobile security? So 5G is very, very interesting. Uh, and I actually relate it to, to another thing that's already been coming for many years, which is IoT, the Internet of Things. We, you know, we've heard about IoT, the Internet of Things, and people yes. are probably getting sick of hearing about it. And I've <laughs> actually had some people say, well, where is all of this IoT? I thought right. the big wave was coming. The reality is it's all around us, right? I mean, mobile phones are IoT devices. Mm -hmm. uh, my watch is an IoT device. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about autonomous vehicles. We're talking about sensors and things. 5G is actually the enabler for a massive, massive wave of IoT adoption because the problem with networks today, and it's nobody's fault, yeah. is there's, de there's a delay on the network. We call it latency. There's a slight delay. You can test it. Send yourself an email, and it takes a few seconds yes. to round trip back to you. Right? Yes. Um, 5G, really, if you look at, say, an autonomous vehicle or something like that, mm. um, it only works if you've got immediate, real-time, guaranteed 100% service between all of these vehicles and devices talking. That is really what the, the power 
power of 5G. So 5G is going to be faster networks, faster than what you get from a wired internet connection today. It's unbelievably fast. It is going to be uh, less costly to deploy uh, than traditional than 4G and 3G networks were before. But to me, the real one is low latency on the network, almost no delay on the network. So now all of these cars can talk to each other in real time into the smart city grids, et cetera, and, and it just goes from there. So but what does yeah. that mean for cybersecurity? So security, so here's, here's, so now we're gonna have all of these different devices connected to the network, if you will, or maybe a network of networks. Mm -hmm. They're all access points. I often talk about the super secure connected toaster because it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard of, right? Yes. A toaster, you know, it's bread, burnt bread is all it does. Mm -hmm. I don't need to secure data on a toaster. If I turn it upside down, crumbs fall out of it. Mm -hmm. But if I've connected it to a network for some reason, it's a node on that network and it's a gateway or an access point to everything else that's on the network as well. Mm -hmm. So if 5G is gonna enable all of these extra connected devices to connect to the network, now I've got all of these different attack vectors and attack points on the network. So we need to make sure that we put our security platform into every single one of those devices to ensure that you can trust the appliance. So that if for whatever reason you put a toaster on your Wi-Fi network in your kitchen, at least you know that somebody can't use that and hack into that to get to your computer, to get to your TV, to get to your home security system. That's where it gets important. Hence the billions of dollars invested in billions. mobile security Absolutely. in the next yes. year. Which is why I can afford a nice suit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy we have you nicely dressed. Yeah. There we go. Thank you yeah. very much, Nick. It was a pleasure having you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for your time.